SpaceX has finished the Starship 20 heat shield, is working on assembling the different Mechazilla parts for the orbital launch, and we're taking a good look at the Super Heavy engine section. We're also reviewing the SpaceX Falcon 9 Inspiration 4 launch and its implications. Let's find out. What about it? Go for launch. We're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates SpaceX is incredibly busy these days. Before heading over to Kennedy Space Center to review the Inspiration4 launch, let's look at Starbase, SpaceX's Starship manufacturing and testing grounds, and what's happened here since the last update. SpaceX is working on countless projects at the same time in Boca Chica, Texas. From infrastructure improvements to prototype construction, there are so many different exciting sites at Starbase that it's hard to cover all of them. We'll try anyway. At the orbital launch mount and tower, one of two planned launch pads for Starship orbital flights, work continues rapidly. Lewis was on site again for all of us taking the latest pictures and videos. The scaffolding is still in place, but we can see more and more systems and pipes being installed under it. After all, this is an orbital launch pad and it needs to serve a rocket that's never been built like this before. Looking at the same scenery from the west, so from the general direction of the construction site, reveals the extent of the scaffolding in place at the two construction sites. The orbital launch mount is basically covered with scaffolding. This means that work is going on everywhere on the mount. The lower quick disconnect arm is one of the most exciting features being worked on at the Starship orbital launch mount. Positioned right next to the booster's fueling ports, its job will be to fill the first stage tanks before liftoff. As it doesn't need a long arm, it's a relatively simple construction, but it shows once again that SpaceX has wholly abandoned the idea of fueling the Starship stack through the bottom of the rocket. It's now a much more traditional approach. Looking at it from this angle shows the size of the element already installed. It also gives us the perfect view to explain a few of the features visible in the picture. So, by public demand, here are some details on what's outside Booster Force engine section. All the way on the left, we have two large COPVs. COPV stands for Composite Overwrapped Pressure Vessel. So, a tank that's been strengthened by wrapping it into carbon fiber. Those tanks are used for engine startups on SpaceX's Starship prototypes, and since a Super Heavy is bigger, the tanks are bigger too. Right next to it, there's a pipe going up on the side of the booster. This is one of the autogenous pressurization lines I talked about in the last episode. In this case, it's one of the autogenous pressurization lines going up towards the top of the O2 tank. Next up, we have a heat exchanger. The system is used to cool down something hot. Since there's only one hot thing on this rocket, heated gas from the engines, this system is likely used to cool down the autogenous pressurization gas coming from the engines before it's redirected upwards into the tanks. This way, the cryogenically cooled propellant in the tanks doesn't heat up that quick and it also reduces the temperature difference on the booster's hull. Next to it, on the right side, there is another one of the autogenous pressurization lines, this time for the methane tank. Same system as on the O2 lines, slightly different pipe diameter. Then comes another set of two giant COPVs. The booster is much larger than a Starship and features almost five times the amount of engines. A lot of COPV capacity is needed. All the way on the right we can see the fueling port. It has two large inlets, one for methane and one for oxygen, and several smaller ones around it. Those are backflow valves mainly to suck out air and keep the pressure inside the tank stable while fueling is underway. And finally, all the way on the right and not connected to the booster, we have the fueling arm reaching up from the pad itself and when finished extending inwards to connect to the fueling port of the booster. Over from SpaceX, 3D Creation Eccentric has made a short animation depicting how it will work. As said, it doesn't involve any sort of arm as the upper one. Those, of course, are just a few systems visible in the picture. Next time you're being asked about the engine section of a Super Heavy booster, you'll be able to impress. Talking about quick disconnect arms for the orbital Starship launches, here's one of Lewis's crystal clear pictures of the upper arm that's already installed on the tower. The articulator is installed. Plumbing seems to be largely done. It looks pretty much finished. 
In the front though, there are some hinges, so it's still missing its extension. That's possibly being worked on at the construction site right now. The latest progress looks very promising and it shouldn't take long to finish it either. Looking at it from above again as seen on RGB Area Photography's latest pictures shows the pliers like shape. The theory is that it would stabilize the Starship stack while it's being fueled and waiting for the launch. Next to the orbital launch mount, SpaceX workers are still busy assembling Mechazilla, Elon Musk's Starship and Super Heavy catcher mechanism. Work on the chopsticks continues and they do look like they are almost ready for installation now. The possible carriage system for the chopsticks is progressing rapidly. Where there was no arm attached last week, the system seems to be almost fully assembled by now. Just yesterday, the last extensions for the arms were installed. The puzzle pieces are coming together and it shouldn't be much longer until the system can be installed on the launch support tower. Next up, we'll talk Starship heat shield progress and some surprising news about it. And we'll take a detailed look at one of the most epic rocket launches of this year, Inspiration4. The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Looking for a more direct way of support? Become a Patreon or YouTube member by clicking the join button right under the video and get some awesome perks. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the community or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for channel members. Or do you know about the Y Warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt, hoodie or cap and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description, you rock! SpaceX does seem to have had trouble with the Starship 20 heat shield. After transporting it to the launch site, tiles were missing and others were cracked. Since then, workers have been busy first inspecting all the tiles and then replacing them. It was a tedious process. Was. Past tense. What you're looking at here are some of the best pictures ever of a full Starship heat shield. Well, almost. There are still a few empty spots surrounding the lift hook attachment points, but other than that… The pictures Lewis returned to the Y Studio showing the S20 heat shield are just stunning. It has something satisfying to look at them. Almost every spot is covered and heat shields in general are a fascinating topic. They will have to withstand some high temperatures. During re-entry, the air hitting the space shuttle reached around 3000 degrees Fahrenheit as it compressed against the surface. NASA's latest Mars rover, Perseverance, reached similar toasty temperatures of approximately 2400 degrees when it entered the planet's atmosphere in February. So these tiles will need to work hard on a fully reusable upper stage. But just looking at the tiles reveals that this is not the final design. Some of them are slightly tilted, not flush with the surface. Musk has already mentioned that particularly the spots surrounding the flap hinges will pose a challenge. He also said that the first few orbital starships will likely not make it back in one piece due to the heat shield not being perfect. There still is a lot of work left to be done. Keep in mind that you're looking at the Mark I starship equivalent of a fully reusable heat shield here. What do you think are the odds of Starship 20 making it all the way to the splashdown site near Hawaii on its first and last orbital flight mission? As always, tell me in the comments. Now let's talk Inspiration4. Have you missed the launch? Or maybe you didn't want to watch a 4 hour livestream? I've as always got you covered. This is it. 3 hours until launch. 3 hours until the world of space travel was changed forever. Inspiration4. Initiated by Jared Isaacman in the Crew Dragon capsule leadership seat, founder and CEO of Shift4 Payments. A billionaire is trying to change the world by collecting more than $31 million to date for the St. Jude Children's Research Hospital and for the battle against cancer and by ushering in a new era of private space exploration. Private space travel has been around for a while. For example, on October 12th of 2008, Richard Garriott, a video game developer and entrepreneur, made the trip to the International Space Station aboard a Russian Soyuz rocket. He stayed for almost 12 days and spent 30 million dollars for the journey of his lifetime. This is different though. SpaceX wants to drive down costs for private space travel and on top of that organize it and market the idea in the same way that Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic recently did it. It's just that this is not a short trip above the Kármán line. Crew Dragon Resilience or Dragon C207 as it's called internally at SpaceX is of course a flown spacecraft. 
It did the first mission to the ISS as part of the Crew-1 flight on November 16th of 2020. It got some upgrades for this mission though. SpaceX has installed a cupola, where a typical Crew Dragon has the docking adapter. From the inside it's behind a hatch. Once that is open, the crew can experience an even better view than what the ISS crew has with their cupola. SpaceX has released a short video already, where you can see a live view of the cupola in space after the launch had happened. This is just incredibly beautiful. And the reason for the incredible view is a new distance milestone. 575 kilometers. In the end it even reached 585. That's further away than the ISS and it's as far as no one has been since the Hubble service missions. 28,000 kilometers per hour, 96 minutes per orbit. That's slightly slower than the ISS as the orbit is wider and 15 sunsets and sunrises per day. And when Haley, Cian, Chris and Jared walked through the access arm towards the capsule, you could see it in their faces. This is a once in a lifetime experience. A billionaire, a cancer survivor, an almost astronaut and a donor. What a mix. And SpaceX even opened up a new list of signatures on the wall of the access arm. On the left surrounding the NASA symbol, you can of course find the signatures of those who flew for NASA with the SpaceX capsule. On the right, they are starting a new list with their names. Private SpaceX astronauts. Will this list ever be more extensive than the NASA one? Besides it being one of the most impressive launches of 2021 already, there was nothing but textbook perfection about the launch itself. Falcon 9 rockets are a marvel of engineering. They just work as intended. Clean liftoff into the Florida night sky, no hiccups. Just by looking at Haley's face shortly after Max-Q, you can tell what kind of an experience it must be to ride a dragon to space. The main engine cutoff and stage separation came and went without a problem. We've seen this many times, but imagine those ordinary people, no superhero astronauts experiencing it. That's something different. Booster landing, of course, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean as most of the time and bullseye as most of the time. And space, dragon separation, everything gets quiet inside the capsule and they know they've arrived. That's it. Now they will live, work and gasp outside the windows in this capsule for three whole days. They will do science, call home, take pictures and have fun. As that's what you do as a tourist. They'll live out three days of their lives in space. They'll sleep, eat, laugh and… Yes, they do have a toilet. I had to answer this question as it was asked like crazy by many from the community. What are you people interested in? They have the experience of a lifetime and you ask yourself how they're going to use the three seashells. And yes, it does have a curtain too, so no watching others do their business. Let's just hope the CO2 scrubbers can scrub smell too. Elon Musk even visited them to wish them Godspeed. That's it. Inspiration4 is going to stay in orbit until September 19th. Of course, the planned splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean will be live broadcasted and we can look forward to tons of videos and pictures in the aftermath. SpaceX changed the spaceflight history with this flight. Not only can anyone book flights now, but it also showed the world that ordinary people can get to space. More flights are planned as well. A flight to the ISS in 2022, Tom Cruise will fly as well. Yusaku Maezawa is still planning Dear Moon together with SpaceX for 2023. A starship with civilians on board breaking the Apollo distance record. The future of space tourism seems glorious and Inspiration4 hopefully was just a small stepping stone for much more to come. Fingers crossed, you might be able to get to space for an actually affordable price once starships are flying. Let's save the world, right? But first let's order something on Amazon, fly to a vacation and turn off the AC because it's hot today, right? Listen, I have the same problem. We all do. Most of us want to do something to better ourselves, make things right again, but then we also want to live our lives. Is there an easy solution to this? Musk wants to build starships to make us multiplanetary. He wants to do this because he believes that the window of opportunity for such an endeavor might be limited in time. There are ways out of this dilemma and today's sponsor REN is one of them. At REN.co you can calculate your personal carbon footprint and in the end you receive a price which if you're willing to pay it monthly will offset the carbon footprint by funding projects that plant trees and protect the rainforest. 
It's an opportunity to not just talk about it, but to actually put your money where your mouth is and do something about it. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. No one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what you have left after your own efforts. REN is super transparent. They post every receipt they get for their support of all the projects. You can see all the projects yourself. You receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection and other projects you support with your money. No one can solve the climate crisis on their own, but together we can make a difference. You can start helping today by learning more on REN.co. I've partnered with REN to plant 10 extra trees for the first 100 people who sign up using my referral link. Help What About It and help the planet at the same time. Sounds like a good idea. A link can be found in the description. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Daniel Mee Thompson, Swiss Hawaiian, Joshua Wiggins, Fitz Sovana, Robert Gill, Chris Trottier, Logan Hawkins, David Huntsman, Chris Ediger, Jason Bourne and many others. You rock so incredibly much. Without you and countless others, we couldn't even produce this content. So the entire team's gratitude is yours. Make sure to hop on our supporter exclusive Discord to join more than a thousand spaceflight enthusiasts and to give me a chance to thank you in person. Today's team shout out goes to Luis Rodriguez again. It's such an incredible experience to work with you and your pictures inspire so many out there. Everyone send some love to Luis through the comment section. I'll tell him to read it. Luis, you rock. Those tanks are used for engine startups on Super SpaceX's Starships. What? Right next to it, there's a simple pipe. <clears throat> right? <laughs> also retu retuses it, retuses. No. Ah, come on. Top, 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 top. National Space Station. <laughs> okay, I can do this. Founder and CEO of Shift. Cool. Did it.